In this edition of Back in History, we bring to you the story of the gruesome assassination of Kudira Tabiola. She was assassinated in Lagos State, Nigeria on 4th day of June 1996. She was a well-known woman and the news of her death was received with great shock at home in Nigeria and across the various countries of the world. Some persons were arrested and detained in connection with the murder. They were tried for several years at the Lagos State High Court. In the end, two of the prime suspects were convicted and sentenced to death by hanging, but on appeal, they were acquitted and discharged for want of evidence. The memory of Kudira Tabiola still remains fresh in the hearts of many persons across Nigeria and around the world till today. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Kudira Tabiola was the wife of Chief M. Kwe Abiola. Abiola was a popular Nigerian politician, industrialist, and philanthropist. He was a registered member of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and was the presidential candidate of the party in the build up to the June 12, 1993 general election. At that time, Nigerians were hungry for a quick return to civilian administration after several years of military rule and dictatorship. There was thus a wave of popular participation in the electoral process, and the choice of M. K. Abiola as a candidate of one of the two leading political parties in the country was greeted with wide acceptability, which was reflected in the voting pattern across the country. On the day of the election, millions of Nigerians lined up in front of the SDP logo to cast their votes in favor of M. K. Abiola. At the close of ballots, M. K. Abiola won in about 98% of the total votes cast across the country, with results from only two states left to be declared. While the country waited to hear the final announcement of result and the pronouncement of M. K. Abiola as the winner of the presidential election, the unthinkable happened. The military stopped a further announcement, and before Nigerians could fully understand, what was going on, the election was completely annulled. M. K. Abiola thus became a man who came very close to the presidency of Nigeria but who was blatantly denied the precious opportunity of clinching the presidency. A serious struggle thus began across the country and in the diaspora to mount pressure on the military for them to allow M. K. Abiola to be announced and sworn in as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having secured the majority of lawful votes cast at the election. Abiola was eventually arrested and detained by the military, and the struggle thus expanded to include the agitation for the release of Abiola from prison. One of the prominent persons who spearheaded the struggle for the actualization of the mandate of MK Abiola was Kudirat Abiola. At that time, the military had once again taken over the reins of power in the country, with Sane Abacha as the head of state, with little or no tolerance to criticism and opposition. The presence of the military in power did not however discourage Kudirat from her determined struggle for the actualization of the mandate of her husband and the release of the husband from unlawful detention. It however appears that some persons within the country were not comfortable with her activities or sustained struggle for the actualization of a mandate that was annulled and considered forgotten by the military. Kodirat started receiving threats to her life from unknown persons until she was finally brought down by the assassin's bullets in broad daylight on the streets of Lagos State, Nigeria. On the ill-fated day, Kudirat Abiola dressed up at home and stepped out for the day's activities. She was driven by her personal driver in a white-colored Mercedes-Benz car. In the city of Lagos, there are several traffic points, causing vehicles to slow down at intervals in the course of her journey. Kudirat's car was approaching the popular 7-Up Depot bus stop in Ikeja and her vehicle began to slow down as there was a traffic point in front. Unknown to Kudirat and her driver, their vehicle was closely followed by an unmarked vehicle. 
In the set of marked vehicle, there were six heavily armed men whose mission was to shoot and kill Kudirat at all costs. The assassin shot into Kudirat's vehicle. The driver was hit and the vehicle came to a halt, giving the assassins more shooting advantage. Kudirat was shot in the forehead and the bullet smashed her brain, leaving her unconscious. Following the rain of bullets on Kudirat and the escape of the assassins, Kudirat was rushed to a co-hospital by public-spirited individuals. She was taken into the intensive care unit and the medical personnel on duty battled assiduously to save her life to no avail. Kudirat died and the news of her death was received with shock across the country. Kudirat was only 44 years old at the time of her death. Also at the time of her death, her husband was in detention at the behest of the military. In other words, the news of the death of Kudirat Abiola was relayed to the husband in his prison cell. Kudirat's driver did not also survive the attack. He was shot at close range by the assassins and his chances of survival was extremely slim. In a single day and in very few minutes, humanity lost two human persons, Kudirat Abiola and a personal driver to the assassin's bullets. The military government at the time, which was headed by General Sane Abacha, frowned seriously at the assassination of Kudirat and her driver and immediately pledged a bounty of $45,000 as reward for anyone who would provide information that can lead to the arrest of the killers. General Abacha immediately blamed terrorism and the increasing wealth of crime in the country for the assassination. He promised that his government will fish out the persons who shot and killed Kudirat in such a callous, horrific and inhuman manner. The military government later sent a high-powered delegation to the Biola family to commiserate with them over the assassination of their matriarch. It is important to note that several Nigerian citizens received the condemnation by the military with mixed feelings. Citizens also viewed the condolence visit with mixed feelings. Inside the same car with Kudirat was her personal assistant Latif Shofolohan. Interestingly, Latif was not shot by the assassins. His life was spared. Before her eventual assassination, Kudirat had complained of threats to her life by unknown persons. She complained that her vehicles were usually trailed by vehicles whose number plates were concealed. One month before the assassination, precisely in May 1996, she was arrested by agents of the state for, quote, possessing publications that were deemed to be critical of the Abacha military government. Her assassination was officially announced to the world by MK Abiola's brother, Mudashiru Abiola. As noted earlier, the assassination of Kudira Tabiola was widely condemned at home and abroad. South Africa condemned the attack in a press release by its foreign affairs minister, Alfred Nzo, who called the attack, quote, a horrific event. He added, unquote, that it is all the more regrettable that such tragedy occurred while her husband remains detained in custody. On his part, the spokesperson for the British Foreign Office described the attack as, quote, a tragic news. Other countries also condemned the attack. Civil liberty organizations and human rights groups also condemned the attack. There were protests in the country with persons carrying placards amidst fear of arrest and detention by the military and security agents. It is important to note that although Kudirat was killed in 1996 during the military regime of Sane Abacha, no serious investigation was done to unravel the assassination. Despite the promises of the military junta, not much was done by the military to match its words with action. Serious efforts to unravel the mystery behind the killing was launched during the tenure 
of President Olusegun Obasanjo, who took over the reins of power in 1999. The Lagos State Government at the time played a major role in the prosecution of the arrested persons. A number of persons who served in Abacha's administration were arrested and detained on charges of murder of Kudirat and the driver. Some of the persons arrested were Major Hamza Al Mustafa, who was Abacha's chief security officer, Lieutenant General Ishaya Bameyi, who was Abacha's chief of army staff, Sergeant Rogers, who was a member of the Special Strike Force Unit of the military at the time, Mohammed Abacha, son of General Sani Abacha, was also arrested and detained. Others were also arrested in connection with the murder. Some of these persons were tried at the Lagos State High Court for several years, spanning not less than 13 years each. Several revelations were made at the trial, especially from the testimony of Sergeant Rogers, who was the singing bird of the trial. He admitted that Kudi Ratabiola was assassinated by his squad, but added that they were only obeying orders from their superior, Major Al Mustafa. He mentioned names and locations and also mentioned the type of ammunition that was used in the assassination of Kudirat. He stated that one of Kudirat Abiola's aides, Latif Shafalohan, was very helpful to his squad. That Latif provided relevant information about Kudirat's itinerary. At the end of trial, lawyers on both sides addressed the court and judgment was reserved. In his final address, filed on behalf of the state, Lawa Pedro, now a senior advocate of Nigeria, addressed the court as counsel for Lagos State, while Ola Lekono Jo addressed the court as counsel for the accused persons. In the judgment delivered on 30th June 2012, Al Mustafa and Latif Shefalahan were found guilty, convicted, and sentenced to death by hanging. The convictions were challenged to the Court of Appeal and in the judgment of the appellate court, the convictions were set aside for reason that at the trial court, there was no evidence beyond reasonable doubt to have warranted the conviction of the persons in issue. Under the Nigerian legal system, the prosecution is expected to prove the allegation of commission of crime against an accused person beyond reasonable doubt. The judgment were further appealed to the Supreme Court by the government of Lagos State, but the Supreme Court also acquitted and discharged the duo in its judgment. It is worthy of note that the murder of Kudi Ratabiola also featured prominently at the Truth and Reconciliation Panel, otherwise known as Oputa Panel, which was set up by the administration of Volusia Gunobasenjo with Justice Chukudufi Oputa as the chairman of the commission. At the Oputa panel, Al Mustafa, for instance, narrated that he knew nothing about the assassination of Kudirat Abiola and that he did not at any time authorize Sergeant Rogers or anyone else to shoot and kill Kudirat Abiola. He pleaded his innocence and added that his trial was malicious and made on pure suspicion and nothing else. To date, no one can be said to have been found guilty of the assassination of Kudirat Abiola. Her assassination remains unraveled till date, just like the assassination of the likes of Marshal Hari, Bolaige, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Pahalfred Rewane, Delegiwa, and many others. Before her death, some pro democracy activists, such as Wolesho Inka, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, Professor Shola Adeyeye, Faye Mekayode, Olalemi, Dakbo Olorunyemi, and many others had organized themselves into a strong opposition voice to the military. They advocated through several medium for the actualization of the electoral mandate of MK Abiola and the return of democracy to Nigeria. They also advocated for his release from unlawful custody. They formed a radio station and initially named it Radio Freedom and later changed the name 
to radio democracy. The radio station was based in Norway, beyond the reach of the Nigerian military junta. Following the assassination of Kudirat, the name of the radio station was changed from Radio Democracy to Radio Kudirat. In 1998, a street corner in New York was renamed Kudirat Abiola Corner. Kudirat has been immortalized in many other ways since her death. Brigadier General Lagun Shoyo Yunola was the military governor of Lagos State when the incident happened. In a recent interview with Daily Post newspaper of 27 May 2017 with the caption, quote, Oyinola opens up a murder of Kudira Tabiola, Oyinola told newsmen that, quote, the murder was an unfortunate incident that he had to grapple with. In his words, unquote, I was opening the reconstructed Sura market on Lagos Island. That was on June 4. 1996. When I got a call from the current Obar of Lagos, Rewan Akiolu, who was a commissioner of police somewhere in the country then, he called me and said, unquote, His Excellency, have you heard that Kudira Tabiola has been shot? I quickly rounded off the market event and headed for Ikeja. I called Ugundimu, the commissioner for health and he confirmed it. He said he was there at the hospital battling to see if they could save her life. It was Ogundimu who later gave me the news of her death." Unquote. Oyinola went on to say, unquote, mischief makers then took over. The next thing they said was that she was coming from my office in Ikeja and that after she left, I sent assassins after her. But I thank God, when eventually the person who shot her, Sergeant Rogers, was arrested and in the course of the trial, he told the story of how he did it, or in a last name, did not feature once. Providence also made President Lucio Gunobas and to institute the Oputa panel. And at the panel, nobody mentioned my name. You can imagine that kind of thing. I, who had never slapped my wife. So how would I have instigated people to take guns and pursue a woman? Those were the kinds of intrigues I faced in Lagos. It was something else." Unquote. Kodira's assassination remains an unresolved puzzle to today in Nigeria. Kodirat was born in Zaria in the northern region of Nigeria in 1951. She was the second woman to have married Emke Abiola. But as reported by Wikipedia, at the time of her death, Kudirat was Abiola's senior wife. Kudirat was 44 years old at the time of her death. She had seven biological children, several stepchildren, and a host of other persons. One of her children is the rights activist Hafsa Abiola Castello. Hafsa is the founder of the Kudirat Initiative for Democracy, KIND. Kudirat was also survived by her husband. The husband died in mysterious circumstances in 1998 while still in the custody of the military. Kudirat was buried in Lagos State, Nigeria. Kudirat was assassinated several years back, but her memory shall remain green in the hearts of millions of Nigerian citizens across Nigeria and several countries of the world for many more years to come. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember subscribe to the channel for regular notifications.